Hey guys, it's Meredith. So I'm sitting in 99725, our System 172P model that has the Garmin GFC 500 autopilot installed. There's a picture of the panel. And I'm holding the supplement, which was provided to us by the Avionics shop um, and the actual supplement information that was provided by Garmin. So one thing that came up recently on a uh, instrument student's check ride was he got a fault on the autopilot during his pre-flight check. Now, what we discovered, and I knew this from the time of installation, but after uh, digging deeper into it as a result of this uh, issue, Garmin does not provide any specific recommendations in their flight manual supplement on how to test the autopilot during the pre-flight. So for example, here's the supplement you can see for GFC 500 autopilot with the ESP, the electronic uh, stability protection. And there is nothing in here that tells the pilot what to do before flight to check and make sure that the autopilot is functioning normally. There's literally nothing in here. Um, there is a warning that says do not attempt to overpower the autopilot in flight. And you'll see Garmin mention this repeatedly in their online videos and training. This is mainly for folks that have the electric trim installed, which we do not. We opted not to get the electric trim installed. So if a trim adjustment is necessary with the autopilot engaged, the pilot has to do it manually. And you'll get a little indicator on the Garmin G5 that says trim up or down that's a reminder to the pilot to say, hey, you gotta spin the wheel down here to readjust your trim. Okay, so right now the uh, all the systems are off and what I'm gonna do here is turn on the battery. I'm gonna turn on the Avionics Master and let the system boot up. We've got our current databases on the GTN650. Okay, so GPS is booted up, G5s are booted up. It's still trying to find its GPS position, which uh, isn't super important right now for this test. So. Because we've got the autopilot, we've got the little heading knob here, which we can use to sync our heading to our current heading. So I'm gonna push it to sync it. You can see the little blue, um, the little blue V came up to the top. And now if I engage the autopilot simply by turning it on, it engages in roll mode only. Okay, so the autopilot is on, we've got roll, just basic roll steering. And you can tell the autopilot is on also because the magenta Chevron is filled in and I push to engage heading mode. I can now steer my heading to the left and see how the yoke moves to the left, which it's, it should. Now I can take my heading bug and move it to the right and I can see that the yoke moves to the right. Okay, so that's what we wanna check. Now there are some control forces on the yoke right now because the autopilot is engaged in heading mode. And if I gently ever so gently push on the yoke, I can feel it wanting to resist my pressure. Okay, but you never ever wanna wail on this thing really hard. And I'll explain why in just a minute. But we just wanna make sure that the autopilot is working correctly by moving the yoke left or right to attempt to steer the airplane left or right if we were in flight, okay? Now, the next thing we wanna do is check the vertical mode. So this, this, this is the pitch servo. Here, there, you can see there's that little trim message you would get if your trim was out of whack. And that doesn't mean anything right now because we're sitting on the ground with no airspeed. So we're just gonna ignore that trim message for right now. So what I'm gonna do is hit the vertical speed mode. And you can see that the default is zero. So it's basically just not doing anything right now. But if I take this wheel 
okay? And I'm gonna trim it down. And what that tells the plane is I want nose down to initiate a descent. And so what we should see is the yoke moving forward. I don't really see it doing anything. Now I'm gonna move the opposite way up and I should see the yoke moving back. See, the yoke is moving back toward me. Now I'm gonna scroll it for a descent again and see if the yoke will move forward. And it is. Now if I attempt to resist the pressure very gently with just two fingers, I can feel some resistance. And that's all you wanna do. You don't wanna like pull it to try and break it out. And I'll explain why in a minute. So I can feel and see that all that is working great. Now I'm just gonna take this button and I'm gonna disconnect the autopilot. And you can actually hear the servos disengaging with the engine not running. There's like a little click. And now you can see that the magenta chevrons are hollow and all we're left with is flight director. Over here on the controller, you can see that the autopilot um, light is off. And if I push FD for flight director, everything goes blank. Now up here on my G5, I'm left with nothing. And if I do flight controls free and correct, I can see that I have free movement of the flight controls, no autopilot engaged. Okay, now let's talk about our pre-flight check. Here at Holiday Aviation, we have one checklist for all three of our 172s, two P models and one N model. They are similar enough that it makes sense for us to use just one checklist. The only functional difference among the three planes is the autopilot that's installed in November 99725. To keep it simple, and for the benefit of our student pilots, we've included a callout reminding pilots of November 99725 to ensure the autopilot is off before takeoff. Any pilot who flies any airplane with an autopilot installed needs to understand how the autopilot works and at a minimum needs to know how to turn the thing off and keep it off if they're not prepared to use it. This popular YouTube star and her father died in a crash last month and while the NTSB is still investigating the accident, general aviation experts on YouTube seem to be leaning toward the pilot's failure to properly use and disengage the autopilot. Garmin advertises the GSA-28 as a, quote, smart servo, but is it really smart enough not to break at the hands of a ham-fisted pilot? The documentation is vague and somewhat contradictory. On the same page of the manual, Garmin states that, quote, any application of pressure or force to the controls should be avoided when the autopilot is engaged. Then, it immediately states that the pilot should check for proper autopilot operation and ensure the autopilot can be overpowered. So which is it? It also states that the pilot should, quote, note the forces required to overpower the autopilot servo clutches. Is there a spec for that? How many pounds of pressure should be required for normal operation? You'd think the engineers at Garmin would know this and communicate this to pilots, but they don't. I'm pushing on that pretty hard. So there's some things you just shouldn't do with an airplane unless you really know what you're doing, because if you do it, you might break the airplane. And that could cause damage to the airplane and possibly injury to someone else if that damage to the airplane results in an accident. One of those things is pushing down on the tail in order to pivot the airplane around. There's a spar in here. If you push too hard, you can damage the spar and that can cause an accident. But the next person who flies it might not see the damage inside unless, let's say, you wrinkle the skin of the airplane. That damage might remain hidden. It's not something somebody could see during a pre-flight. And that's why you don't want to really torque those controls of the uh, autopilot either is because that servo is buried inside the airplane where nobody can see it during a pre-flight. So the pilot might not know if you inadvertently cause damage to the servo by jerking on the controls. I've pulled the chute on a Cirrus in the simulator. They say that requires 45 pounds of force. So does that mean I need to work out more to overpower the GFC 500 autopilot servos? So if you're an engineer at Garmin, here are my questions. Why is there no pre-flight checklist published for this thing? 
Can a pilot inadvertently damage the servo by attempting to overpower it? Was any of this tested during the FAA approval process for this equipment? Well, until I get an answer from somebody, I'm going to stick with pushing the red button on the yoke to turn the autopilot off. I know it works, and it won't hurt anything.